everyone. Hope you're doing okay today. Um, I just got a catheter shipment. So I thought I would like open it with you guys and tell you uh, a little bit about catheters and like why I use them. Um, <laughs> maybe even go through like how to use them for like the new people out there who are like new to using catheters. Um, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's not just for old people or um, it actually has helped my quality of life ever since I started using catheters because I wasn't able to, to pee without them. Um, so yeah, uh, anyway, sorry if my filming is not so good. I'm just kind of like learning, still getting the hang of this. Uh, okay, let me... Okay, so it's always a pain to open this, but actually this is not so fun. Oh, yeah, it's hard. I should just get some scissors, but it's in the other room. Not the right ones, luckily. Are you seeing all of that? Oh, that so these are um, latex-free. They are also uh, uh, DRI. Oh, just kidding. I was gonna say drip-free. <laughs> uh, DEHP-free, which um, I don't know exactly what that is, but I'm guessing it's a chemical kind of like BPA that's uh, in plastic. So that is great that this is not made with, uh, with those things because they're allergens to a lot of people. So this is what this catheter looks like. Um, it doesn't look like much really because it's inside of this. Um, but yeah, this is my favorite one uh, so far because it's, well, it's not too long. I don't really like the long ones. Um, and I just find that it's like, it's not as flimsy, it just goes in easier. Um, but yeah, let's go to the bathroom and uh, I'll show you how this works. Okay, so um, by the way, um, these I forgot to mention are the Cure Twist uh, T14 slash uh, F teen French. I think that's what the FR stands for. Um, I hope I'm right about that. If not, um, yeah, just kidding. So, uh, all that good stuff. And, um, yeah, I will show you. First of all, let me show you my bag. I have uh, a, so they gave me, when I was diagnosed after my Eurodynamics test, they gave me this comfort medical bag, which, um, oops, I kind of have to do this with fun hands, so I mean, um, okay, so, ah, that's as far as my arm was stretched. Anyway, I'm just going to turn the camera for a second so you guys can see, um, so at the top, I keep my uh, my favorite catheters up there, so they're nice and handy. Uh, and then up here, I just have some wipes, you know, um, which help to, you know, just like clean and sterilize the area. And then down here I, is where I keep my catheters. Um, so okay, this is just something that came with it, and I have never used this. It's just like a sterilization kit. Um, so these are the lubed ones, the ones that come with lube. Um, these are the like beginner ones. These are the ones I use at first because they're like really small. Um, and let me see what the number is on this. This is Ultra 14. Oh, interesting. It also says 14 French. Huh. That's curious. 
Okay, I don't know, but these are the small lubed ones. Um, and then I have these, which are not my favorite, but I use them a lot too. Um, they're the F12 catheters. Um, and the, the numbers just um, refer to the uh, like width or the size, I should say, of the tube. Um, so it goes as low as 10, that's the smallest uh, as far as I know. And then uh, you go to 12, you know, 14, 16, 18, yeah, that's um, <clears throat> And I just, uh, I keep this open right here on my cabinet so that it's really convenient um, and easy <clears throat> to reach. I don't have to move that much. I can just open this and keep it like by the toilet. The, actually, I need to refill my bag because there have been times that I've run out and uh, just ignore it. It's not kind of nice. um, It's always good to have a lot handy. OCD and I have to fix this. Okay, that didn't fix it that much, but that's okay. That'll do. Okay, guys, so I wanted to go over some like tips and show you, uh, well, not show you, but explain how to use the catheters or how I was taught um, to use them. And first of all, I want to talk about um, sterilization and ways to avoid getting UTIs and kidney infections because unfortunately it is common or I should say more common when you have when you use catheters to get UTIs um, simply because you're putting something in and taking it out all the time um, or you're just you have a Foley or indwelling catheter and it's in there all the time so it's kind of like perfect breeding ground for bacteria um, so first of all my first tip is a probiotic that is specifically made for uh, urinary tract health. This one is great. This is Garden of Life. Um, 50 billion probiotics with 16 different strains of probiotics. Um, it really doesn't matter the brand as long as you see one that specifically says urinary tract health like this one. Um, also, side note, if I look different in this clip, it's because I had to take kind of a long break um, between this part of the video and the last parts that I filmed because I was getting really sick, um, really nauseated um, filming last time. So I apologize if maybe my hair is longer or something. It's been, actually, believe it or not, it's been five weeks because life has just been crazy. I've been in and out of hospitals. It's It's been crazy, so. Um, just wanted to put that out there, but yeah, probiotic, that is a great way to, um, yeah, to keep your, your urinary tract, uh, area healthy. Um, and like I said, it doesn't have to be this brand, any brand that says urinary tract health, um, or even just a regular probiotic would be better than not taking any probiotics. Um, so yeah, we're going to go over some tips. Um, and I will try to insert like a diagram of where exactly the urethra is. Because that is kind of the tricky part. Um, when you're new to catheterizing um, and you're a woman, it's hard to find where your urethra is. Um, I know some people use like a mirror, like a hand mirror, and that's totally fine. Um, so if you want to do that, that's obviously a way that you could find it. Um, another way, um, the way that I was taught, um, so um, for this one, you have to like twist it and take it out. So I'm actually going to show you with this one, the F12 catheter. Um, so, okay, first of all, back to sterilization. I was, I forgot that I was talking about that. The very first thing I do uh, before cathing is I either wash my hands really well and or use this sanitizer or just use this hand sanitizer if that's the only, you know, sometimes I can't wash my hands because I may have an IV in my hand or something and so this is what I do. 
make sure to get a lot in my hands just you know rub them in and I don't touch anything until my hands are sterilized once they're sterilized I get the catheter okay and get it out I hold it by the top okay and then um, basically you spread your legs a little the way I was taught uh, by my urology nurse is you take your dominant hand so I'm right-handed so I'm gonna take my right hand put it over your yoni and these three fingers so your pinky your ring and your middle finger you just put these three right in the middle of your yoni okay and then the middle of those three, so that your ring finger, should feel for your urethra, okay? Now, the way I was told to spot it was feel for the little donut feeling thing uh, right above your vagina hole. So basically, once you feel your vagina, just go up a little bit and then you'll feel a, like a mini donut, basically, like a teeny mini donut, and that's the urethra, okay? Now, once you find it, you're gonna turn this upside down, okay? And remember, I said your dominant hand, let's pretend this is my dark right here. Let's just do this to make it easier. My dominant hand, <clears throat> my right hand, I'm feeling for my urethra. I find it, I keep my finger on it, and then I just put it right in. Now, if you have trouble with this, don't feel bad because it is hard. It is difficult. It has been, I think, five months since I've been capping. And no, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, just telling my cat not to jump up. Um, no, 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 no. And I'm filming right now, sweetie. Um, okay, she might just jump up anyway. So if you see Anne here, this is Anne, you guys. Anne Perkins, my new kitty cat. All right. <laughs> so anyway, let's pretend my hands were, I didn't just touch a cat, my hands were still sterile. Okay, I just found my urethra. I'm trying to get it in. If you're struggling, that happens. It's been five months and I still struggle with getting it in. Um, usually I can get it in no problem, but sometimes it just happens where I have to kind of search around for it for a little bit. Or even when I find it, it just won't, it doesn't want to go in right away, but it just takes practice and patience. Um, but I promise you, everyone struggles. It is hard. Yes, it is uncomfortable, but the good thing is the pain, I promise you, will get better. Um, I have a high tolerance for pain, so for me, it never really hurt. It was just more uncomfortable than anything else. But the more you do it, the more used to it you're gonna be and the less it's gonna bother you. You won't even like think about it twice after a while. Um, <laughs> hey. So yeah, uh, I'm trying to remember my tips. I'm having really bad brain, fo brain frog, as you can tell, I can't even speak. Uh, yeah, so basically that is how I was taught. Now, once it's in, Basically, it's just gonna drain your urine right away. Just imagine it as an upside down straw or like a straw that you just, you know, but it's going down instead of sucking up, right? And once your urine has drained completely, you're gonna feel this odd like tugging sensation and that means you're done. Now, if the urine stops and you still feel like you're, like you're not empty, you can kind of move the catheter around like from left to right, back, front. Sometimes for whatever reason that really helps. Um, so just don't stop right when the urine stops, just kind of move around a little, see if there's anything left, unless it just, if it tugs right away, then you know you're, you're empty. Um, once you're empty, you just pull it out from the bottom, okay? And then <clears throat> what I do is I kind of just shake any excess out and then I, Put it in my bin which i keep uh right next to the toilet you guys i have my commode here so that i could show you uh how this works without having to um, be on the toilet <clears throat> plus there wouldn't be any space for my camera in the bathroom if i did it that way but anyway um sorry again i'm having bad brain fog you guys <laughs> um yeah i I swear I had another tip or two. Bear with me here while I think about it. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. 
Okay, nothing's coming to me. So if I remember later, I will definitely be sure to record it and add it in. But um, you are gonna go through multiple catheters before you find the one that you like or that's most comfortable. If you've tried two or three and they're all really uncomfortable, don't get discouraged, just keep trying. There are so many different kinds of catheters out there. Um, like I said, there's this one, this one's smaller. Uh, and it comes pre-lubed, so some people like that better. Um, for me, I prefer the other ones just because uh, I like the shorter ones, but I like the non-lubed ones because the lube gets all over your hands and it could be a big mess. Um, I mean, it's really not that big of a deal, but it's just something that I don't really like, so I prefer the ones that aren't lubed. Um, personally, I get my catheters through Comfort Medical. Uh, and they're excellent about getting my catheters in um, before they run out. They call me, I don't have to call them, which makes it much easier. Um, and I really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that this is all I have for now. Um, like I said, if I think of anything else, I'll be sure to record that and add that in. Another tip I have uh, for ladies out there who cat, we'll use catheters is to get yourself some wipes, some good natural flushable or any kind of wipes. Um, these really come in handy for cathing, um, especially when it's that time of the month and you want to stay clean. This is a lifesaver. Um, I wish I had known about this when I started cathing myself. Uh, so yeah. Uh, also, if you're like me, you don't usually feel when you're full or when you have to go because your bladder is paralyzed. Uh, I've been, I had an ultrasound recently of my bladder and they found that my bladder was 800 mils full uh, of urine and I had no clue. I was like, what? What? Are you Is this right? Are you sure? They're like, yeah, you're full. You don't feel it. And I couldn't feel a thing, like I, I had no clue that I had to empty my bladder. So if you're like me and you don't feel it, you won't really know when you have to go. You won't have like the alert, the signal like, oh, I have to go now. So you basically just go like at a scheduled time or if you're like me, you go um, a certain number of times a day. So like four times a day on average is how often I cath. Um, so in other words, I use my catheter four times a day. Uh, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Um, I drink a lot of water and get a lot of fluids because I have pots. So uh, you might, if you don't drink as much water, you might only need to cast two or three times a day. Uh, I really don't know, but I would say start out with three times a day, see how that is. Um, and then you could even try for four and yeah, see what works for you. Um, and a lot of people have asked me why I have to cast. Um, and I have, I've been diagnosed with neurogenic bladder, <clears throat> which is basically where your, uh, bladder gets paralyzed or stops working because it stops getting signals, um, from your spine and or your brain. Um, for me, it's due to, uh, my spinal cord injury, um, my, um, and a lot, of, a lot of other issues with my spine, stenosis, degenerative disc disease. Um, I have a lot of, you know, arthritis, herniations, a lot of different things. Um, it basically all started after my, my emergency surgery last year. Uh, when I woke up, I had retention, I couldn't go. And um, right then and there, they like, um, they suspected I had um, neurogenic bladder, but they didn't diagnose it then because I could still go a little, like I, I could go, but I had to push, you know, I had to push really hard and then like just a little bit would come out no matter how hard I pushed. Um, and this went on for basically at least six months before, six to eight months before um, my urologist was like, okay, your, your meds aren't working, you're still not peeing, um, and you need to get a urodynamics test. So, um, yeah, so I had a urodynamics test where, um, it, uh, it's a really uncomfortable test, but um, 
So basically they insert a catheter into your urethra and fill it with sterile water. And then they, um, they also hook up a bunch of electrodes and wires um, to see if, you know, to measure your bladder function, to see if there um, are impulse or like signals coming from your, the nerves there, or if it's like muscle related, I don't know exactly. Um, but basically that's when they diagnosed me with a neurogenic bladder. They, um, yeah, they figured out my bladder was not working or hardly working at all. Um, and I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, cause my bladder would get so full and it would be so painful because I, I have to drink a lot of water because I have pots. Um, and I wouldn't be able to empty my bladder. Um, well I would, but very little, like I couldn't always, um, I couldn't release all of my urine. I could only empty a little. So yeah, um, <laughs> that's how I got diagnosed. And um, unfortunately, I might have to cath for the rest of my life um, because this is, you know, they, they, it's pretty much irreversible. Um, if anything, it's, it, it's more likely to get worse than better. Um, but, you know, it's not the worst thing. It's honestly better to be able to cath than not be able to pee. Um, and it doesn't even hurt me anymore. I got used to it. Um, sometimes I still struggle. It's been like three months now at least, or four months I've been cathing, and sometimes I still struggle to get it in. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's like, it's easy, and it's, I don't even think about it. Um, yeah, so I hope that helped. Um, and if you guys like this video, please like it and give it a <laughs>